up, everyone? Welcome back to another Timmins podcast. Uh, the most talked about podcast in Goshen. I can guarantee that. I got a great guest today, uh, Trey Marquise. Welcome, man. man. Thank you for having me. Thank yeah. You. Dude, it's... Um, so I talked about you on my last podcast with Colin, which was maybe two weeks ago I released, and uh, he had talked about a movie that you're doing. So let's 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 start out, dude. Who are you? What where are you from? What are you doing? Welcome to Timmy's podcast. Man, you know, clap it up, you know. <laughs> Didn't mean to hit the mic, but no, no. um, but yeah. So I am born and raised South Bend, Indiana. Okay. Um, I'm 28 years old. Um, started off as a musician, vocalist, and now I'm into, you know, film directing, you know, uh, director of photography, writer, producer, you know, we, yeah. we wear a lot of hats basically. Yeah. So, yeah. You do all, do it all. I'm sure. Everything. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. That's, that's good. You were into music at the start. So were you like, um, just like, did, were you producing music or writing yeah, music so or was it? I was producing, writing. Um, I mean, I'm starting, I'm, I'm kind of still in music. Yeah. Um, secretly working on an album. Oh, no way. So not a lot of people know, but don't know now. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, but yeah, so I was a vocalist. Well, I started off kind of rapping when I was younger. Okay. Um, trying to like find my voice as a vocalist. Um, and then just recently, maybe 2020 is when I kind of like broke out and like actually had the confidence. and To post it. Yeah, stuff. to post, yeah. Yeah, you know, stuff like that. So yeah. Yeah, let people know what you're doing. Exactly, and, yeah. exactly, yeah. Yeah, I know a bunch of people who make, awesome music and they just keep it to themselves yeah. i'm like no dude it's for everyone yeah let like, the world yeah, yeah let, let the world, the world see know. It. Yeah. uh can you pull your mic up just a tad i'm, I'm so sorry, sorry. Yep, yeah yep, i'm so yep, sorry yep, yeah, there yep, yep, there we go there we go yeah um fiddle with it too that's so and now you've transitioned over to film yes, so sir. you're doing all types of film yep. as well and yep. are, is that kind of your business yeah kind of as well too yep. is doing Full film time. for Yep, full time. time dream story films. Oh, uh, got started in 2020. Um, okay. Wow. Yeah, Bob quit my job um, August of 2020. Um, got established as a business December of 2020. I didn't buy my first camera until October 28th of 2020. Oh wow. Yeah. So it's been a lot of growth, like since just from nothing, like zero to where you're at. Yeah, now, to where basically. we are now. Yeah, yeah, for Holy sure. Holy cow. Yeah. And now you're doing that full time. Full time. What? What was the decision to make that leap like what were you doing before that what was the yeah. job before that so what i was doing before that i was um i was a driver i used to you know like those like big like 40 gallon like uh tanks of water yeah like yeah you, you put in the office right exactly yeah like, the water I used to coolers deliver those. yeah yeah the water coolers yeah i used gotcha. to deliver those um it was a very uh got some lot physical. manual yeah yes man. i was i was ripped in 2020 though. <laughs> yeah. like, i was ripped yeah oh sure yeah um how but, many could you carry in one hand like six oh, right. pff, no, i wish man. two two at a time that's still but imagine like one of, like there's a store in uh mishawaka on edison um the name is blanking right now yeah. but um i think every tuesday i would have to deliver 112 bottles no way yeah, and, the, and the truck only like fit maybe 90 <laughs> So you have to make two trips. Yeah, sometimes. Oh my yeah. word! And were you going upstairs and stuff too? Nah. No. Okay. Oh, You're just nah. like leaving for them in one spot. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. But it was but it, was, it was a lot. Like delivering to factories where yeah. they needed a hundred bottles. Like. Oh my word. Yeah. Like during the summertime, it was bad. Yeah. Oh yeah. People were parched. You were just oh yeah, for sure. Yeah. Lot. Yeah. That's crazy. So you yeah. quit that, and then you just started making films, or what? How did so, that happen? So I quit. Um, so God was speaking to me for about three weeks um he's like hey it's time and I was nervous you know yeah um and one day um I well I quit the day of my birthday but as most people would like the job was like hey we'll offer you you know two dollars more right I'm like yeah like whatever I'm back you know yeah um they told me to take my my birthday and the rest of the week off and I'm like cool <laughs> came back on Monday and like it didn't like nothing changed other than you know my pay rate yeah um so with that being said you know I stayed for like another week and it was a Thursday morning, and um, I'm, I'm on my way to my first stop, and God was like, turn this truck around. Like, it's time. I'm like, all right. Wow. You know, um, I walked in. Like, my boss was like, what are you doing? And I dropped my keys in his hand, and I was like, this is it. You know, thank you. I mean, he was pissed off, of course, because yeah. he just lost a driver, and we didn't have a lot of drivers, you know, because right. of COVID and stuff like that. Um, but, you know, that has nothing to do with me. I got, you know, something bigger, you know, ahead of me. So Yeah. 
Wow. Was it like real clear? Like yeah. turn around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's sweet. Yeah. And I didn't know what I was gonna do. Um I have like a small like graphic design back background. Yeah. So I started off just like making logos, um, making flyers and stuff like that. And then I was like, you know what, I'm I'm gonna start doing photography. And so I started renting uh my cousin Brian Fraser's camera. Okay. Um and then I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna start and let like let's try video. Yeah. Um but then I started like shooting some a lot of free stuff. Um, just to get an idea of how it works. Yeah, yeah. It's just start, yeah. yeah, you know, working out those muscles and stuff. Exactly, right? yep. Yeah. Um, and I think for like a year before, because I've kind of always been in the video, because like even though I was an, um, like an artist, I would always like to direct my own music videos as well. Yeah. Um, and I have like four or five music videos out. Uh, shout out to my brother Jimmy Ball, um, <laughs> all the way out in Atlanta. Um, but, um, yeah, so I was kind of always in it and interested. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I just never kind of pursued it. At that. It just wasn't time, you know. Um, so during 2020, um, I got the idea. Well, actually, 2019, we were going to shoot this commercial for this orthodontist in Fort Wayne. Okay. Um, and we were having a conversation about, you know, like, uh, I won't give it away because we're still working on it. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's that project's one of my babies. But um, okay. but yeah. So we were just talking about a concept about a like a like a YouTube series. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's called Table for Three. Okay. And, um, you know, that kind of sparked, like, my interest. I'm like, okay, here we go. And I'm the type of person I'm 100% or I'm zero, and that's, like, with anything. Yeah. Um, but we began writing the script. We we got the entire season done, like, 10 episodes in, like, two weeks. Like, we were up wow. every day to, like— This is you and who? Me and uh, my cousin Cameron Walker from okay. South Bend as well. Okay. Um, so— we got that together. COVID hit, and like I'm like I got all my cast. Like we had like auditions and everything. Like wow, like, so you had all kinds of set yeah, up. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So we were ready, um, but COVID hit, and my brother Jimmy was kind of on the fence of moving to Atlanta. Mm-hmm. He was going back and forth, and me, I'm like, yeah, I support you, but it's like, wait, we were just about to do. A project. Yeah, we were about to do this, you know. Yeah. Um, but he did what was best for him, yeah. and that's fine because I feel like if he didn't move, I wouldn't be in the situation that I am now. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I remember I called one of my older brothers, Tavares, and I'm like, damn, bro, I got to buy a camera. Yeah. Like, you know, I got to start, you know, or I got to finish what I started, in a, you know, in a sense. Um, so that kind of sparked everything. So, yeah. Yeah. That's wild. Yeah. Um, yeah. It sounds like you were playing with this idea of doing videos and stuff before, and then it just was like, okay. Yep. And when it, I, it's interesting because, like, when you take away that support of the job and everything, it's like, all right, this has to actually hit. On top of having a child. <laughs> yeah, on top of having a child. Yeah, I have a 10-year-old right. right now. So Right, so yeah. you have to, like, provide and care. And it's like, that's a lot of um, that's a lot of faith, yeah. dude. That's yeah. a ton of faith to yeah. step out into that. But it sounds like it's going well. Yeah, you know, um, I haven't had an eviction notice on my door yet. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't come and repossess my car yet. Right. You know what I'm saying? So... Um, it does take a, a crazy, um, insane amount of faith. Like, I get friends all the time, like, asking me, like, how how am I doing what I'm doing? And I'm like, God. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's that's literally the only thing that I can say. And, like, I've had the same person or people come up to me and, like, ask me the same question. I'm like, my answer is not going to change. Like, yeah. That's just how it. That, that's how I'm operating right now. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Uh, 100% no worries. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. yeah. Well, uh I have so many questions about that. So one of the other podcasts I do, so I do multiple different podcasts, just, yeah. just for you and the, and the listeners. Um, one of the podcasts I do is called The Dadcast, where I sit down with my dad and we talk about yeah. a lot of spiritual things. Yeah. And so that's that's been something that's been, I've been trying to understand more is like how people interact with God, how yeah. people hear God. Yeah. And I've talked to a, a ton of different people about that too. And so it's so cool to hear, I had no clue, yeah. but it's so cool to hear that as a piece of your story. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to ask you some questions about that. I will oh, have yeah, to get into that. No, 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 no. Let's okay. do it. Let's do what, it. Let's what's do that it. even like? Like, what was that audible thing you heard when you turned your car around? Or how was that feeling? Or what? It, maybe it wasn't audible, but yeah. you're like, okay, God talked to you. What do you know? Boom, right then. Yeah. Like, what was that like? So I think you kind of got to understand his language, you know, how he talks to you. Because I feel like he talks to everyone differently. Yeah. Um, oh, 100%. Dreams. Oh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, right. Exactly. It, it could be, a, it's a not one size fits all. Yeah. Right. Yeah, it could exactly. be reading your Bible. You see it. You exactly. Be, right? Yeah. It could be an audible, like, hey, this is da, da, da. Right. I think my two is direct, like directly to me. Um, 
And the other one is most definitely through like other people. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had run-ins where um, last year I got a, a basically all of my gear stolen. Oh wow! Yeah, it was it was crazy. Um, and there was a guy um, by the name of Tim. Um, and he was like, "Listen, he was like, I don't have a lot of money, but I would love to just meet you in person, and I have this donation for you." I'm like, "Okay, cool." I met up with them, and for like maybe five minutes, I just. I wasn't paying attention. I was paying attention to what he was saying. But in my head, I'm like, this is God that I'm talking to right now. No way. Because this guy knew stuff about me that, and he doesn't even know me. He didn't, he didn't have me on Facebook. Like he heard of me through someone else. Yeah. Um, but like his reassurance just let me know like, okay, like. God's got you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It was, yeah. It was like, um, like you thought you were hearing God, but then it was like, God was definitely. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was, can't that, be it was that reassurance, you know? Yeah, it can't be coincidence. Yeah, not or it, it's a lot of coincidence, coincidences that line up. Exactly. You know, that's, yep. that's how I've seen God. Yeah, he leaves clues for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then directly to you, like, how's that just, like, a feeling or a thought? Or, like, what's that typically like? So, it's, I feel like it's very good to understand, like, how to depict, like, your consciousness versus God, right? Yeah. Um, That was the second time in my life that he spoke so clearly to me to where, like, there wasn't any second guessing. It wasn't like, God, is that you? Or is that my conscience? It was just like, I heard it and it was time to move. Wow. Um, and I also feel like if I didn't move when he said to like to move, like I would have missed out on a lot of opportunities. Yeah. Um, a lot of growth. Um, yeah. Just everything. Yeah. That's wild. That's so cool. Yeah. Uh, I love that, man. Yeah, man. Uh, I really love that. That's, uh, that makes me happy. I, yeah. That's, um, I love asking people how they hear God because you're right. People will hear him different ways. Yeah. Uh, a ton of different ways. And I've heard different ways. You know what I mean? It's, yep. it's just been cool to, yeah. to see how other people are. But yeah, uh, other people do, whether you know it or not, sometimes people don't even know it and they're like literally speaking what God's yep. wanting you to hear. Exactly. Right yeah. He most definitely speaks through other people for sure. So, yeah. Yeah. It's such a cool way. Yeah. Uh, I found that like there's times where I'm like, I'm thinking about someone and I'm like, okay, I need to call them right then. Whether uh, it's just the thought that comes to my mind, I mean, I don't know what it is, but sometimes they're going through something yeah. right when I call them or yep. hey, I was thinking about you. Yeah. These are the things that are happening. Yeah. It's weird how that all ties together. Like, why am I thinking about them right exactly. then yeah. in that situation? Yeah. And there's been times where I've been thinking about people and I didn't call them. I didn't listen. Yeah. And um, it's like I kick myself because then, I, you know, weeks later, I'm like, man, God was telling me to do that right then. Yeah. And, and you I, have to be I, obedient, though. Mm-hmm. That's the crazy part. You know, you just have to be obedient. Yeah. There's OK. I One time I, um, I was walking out of a grocery store and I saw a guy and he was fixing his tire yeah and trying to change it and i was walking by and i'm like um i just heard like hey go go help him out yeah i had my groceries and i was supposed to get somewhere and i'm like no no and i get to my car and i'm like all right god if this is you i'm gonna go up there and if he really needs my help yeah. he'll say it yeah but i'll offer it if not i'm gonna go i go i walk up to him and i'm like hey man do you need any help he's like dude i don't know how to do this i really need help yeah. it was like uh like i like was like god if he really needs help, make sure I know he needs help. It's not yeah. like, hey, I got this. No worries. Thanks for asking. Was, and I'm like, whoa. Yeah, God was telling me to go help him out right yeah. So I was able to help him change his tire. And he's like, he didn't know what he was doing. Yeah. And it was just such a cool thing. Oh, I'm sorry. It was such a cool thing. Um, I got my work <laughs> messaging oh, me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But it was such a cool thing. I'm like, wow, God, you really are. Like, It's just that first feeling of just go over there and ask him if he needs help. Yeah. You know, and that's such a small thing. Yeah. But if you are obedient, then he'll actually start talking to you more exactly. and more, yep. which is a really cool yeah. piece of it as well. And I think, uh, you know, just being able to be ready to serve at all times, you know, mm. like that takes a lot of commitment, you know, because there's been times where like um, uh, there was a time when I was at church and God was like, all right, like I need you to give five hundred dollars. And I'm like, bro, hold on, I only got seven hundred dollars in my pocket. Like, yeah, like, what do you mean? Like rent's due in three days. Yeah. And, uh, you know. Um, I know sometimes, you know, when people are in church and like God puts it on their heart to, to do something, you know, of that magnitude, um, they give it, um, without, with, with, with the lack of confidence, mm. you know? So I gave it with confidence knowing that like, you know, I'm being obedient and not even expecting the blessing back, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But just, I'm being obedient. And then, you know, a week later, you know, I'm getting this deal, this deal, you know, just, a lot of things just lining up. So, yeah. I mean, you know, just 
you know, when you're when you're when you're actively serving, just doing it with confidence. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. just yeah, that's so crazy, and it it uh, it's sometimes stuff that stretches you. Yeah. It usually is a lot of yeah. times stuff that stretches you. Yeah. Like, oh man, I did not want to do that, but yeah. in the end, you're like, oh, that was awesome. Yep. I'm so glad. I did yeah. That. Yeah. That's all. What church do you go to? Um, I go to Faith Alive Ministries on uh, Bendix in South Bend. Okay. Yep. I have not. I don't know a ton of churches in South Bend. Yeah, man. You got to come one Sunday. Yeah. yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. Um, it sounds, yeah. I, I, it sounds like maybe our churches are similarly aligned in the way that we think. Uh, just from talking to yeah. you a little bit. So, yeah. yeah. That would be cool. Faith Alive. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'll write it down. Um, yeah, man. That's awesome. How long have you been, you know, in, you know, following God? I would say. <sighs> So I Christian, but I hate saying Christian. Yeah, I know I'm it. sorry. Yeah, no, no, no. You're good. No, you're good. You're good. It's such a oh, it's such bad connotation to that word. Um. So I've been I've been a member of this church. Well, my parents were members when I was two. Okay. Um. So I guess I've been a member since I was two. <laughs> um. But I mean, just really all my life. Um. As I've experienced like different hardships and you know just rough experiences in my life like that's what gets me closer and closer yeah you know to the point where it's like now it's just like you know most people like go to god when they need something yeah but like even on my way driving here it's a 48 minute drive like no music it's just me and god you know oh, just having yeah. a conversation so um but that's tough for people man. yeah ah uh, yeah that's driving in silence is such a good thing yeah yeah yeah, uh, it's, a, discipline. yeah it's discipline. Yeah, it is. It's like, yeah, that's like cold shower in the morning. Exactly, <laughs> <You know? laughs> or an ice bath after like football practice. Right. Or something. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, oh, this is painful. Yep. But then it's not bad. You feel the benefits of it. Oh yeah. Any, anyways, yeah. So since two, but then it's been this journey probably oh, yeah. of getting close. Oh yeah. Yeah. And understanding. Yeah, yeah. and I know like uh, right now, like me and my brother Cortland, which is also my director of photography on basically all of my projects. Um, I mean, the podcast that we were on yesterday, you know. I mean, of course, like film is like what we're doing now and music is what I'm doing, you know, and I got a bunch of, you know, different business ventures and stuff like that. But like yeah. me, it's like as long as I'm being um, an example for other people to bring them, you know, closer to God, like I feel like I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, you know, like here on this earth. So, yeah, yeah. That's so cool. What was that other podcast? Drop it so that um, Loud Talk TV. Loud Talk Loud TV. Talk TV yeah. yeah. Shout out Mike and Kayvon. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Go check out that episode. Yeah. If you yeah. like this one, go check out that one. Yeah. I'll say that. <laughs> that's cool. Uh, oh, that's awesome, man. Yeah, so, but let's go. Let's jump back to the the film stuff. Yeah. So, 2020. That's when you start doing it, and you're you're doing a lot of stuff for free. A lot yeah. of different projects for free. Oh, learning yeah. how to do it. Uh, how does that transition into like a full time job? Oof. All right. So my first one of my first free gigs, um, I did a like a quick little video for um, this girl who basically does lashes. OK. Um, I hit her up and I'm like, hey, you know, I'm just looking to get started. You know, I see that, you know, you need some content. Um, and that turned into her booking me to go to New York, um, doing some photos and videos for her and her company out there. Oh, cool. Um, yeah. You know, um, everything was paid. <laughs> I didn't have to pay for it, literally anything did you fly out of south bend or chicago uh chicago yeah yeah chicago i, I wouldn't dare fly out of south bend. <laughs> it's too expensive well oh i didn't pay for it so i guess it doesn't matter yeah. um but yeah so you know fast forward to now um i think all of that work paid off i mean even now like i still yeah. do like free gigs um just because i'm passionate about what i do yeah um but that networking and putting in the hours exactly and that grind there and yeah. building those relationships yeah. building those connections and money for the people that's watching this um, when you're in a position, you know, like I am, or, you know, any entrepreneur, um, value people more than money. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, because when it's time for me to go crowdfund for my feature film and I'm like, Hey, I need $500,000. Right. Someone might not have, you know, the money to give, but they're like, Hey, we have locations or, Hey, we have access to wardrobe or, you know, makeup artists or, you know, something, you know, stuff like that. So, yeah. yeah. Or I love your dream and I have a network of exactly. people. Let me exactly that opportunity exactly. to those people. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Cause you put that relationship in. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, man. Yeah. So that, so that, that's kind of how that grew where, so in, you know, I mean, I kind of want to talk a little bit about this too as well. Coffee and cream. Yeah. Right. Where, where did that kind of come from? And so for people who don't know, coffee and cream, well, maybe you just tell them what, yeah. what is coffee and cream. So coffee and cream is a film that I wrote in, at the end of 2020. Um, or, ooh, was it 20, 2021? I'm sorry. Okay. 2021. 
Different project I'm thinking about. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, but yeah, I started writing that um, at the end of 2021. Um, I didn't know why I was writing it until we were actually in the editing room. Um, and I started to see it pieced together. And like, I was going through something at the time. And I'm like, okay, this resonates with what I'm going through now. And it kind of helped me through, you know, some of the stuff that I was going through. Yeah. Um, but I wrote it just, I love writing, you know, love stories. Um, but I also love drama too. Um, so you get a you get a, a good sense of both of that in there. Um, but man, like honestly, I was just writing it because I was just like, man, like some I had something on my heart that I needed to get off. You know, yeah. there wasn't any like deep meaning to it. Yeah. Um, it was just like, okay, I need to show the world what I can do, but also like I need to express myself yeah. um and write out what I'm feeling at the time, you know? Yeah. So it's yeah. probably a way to yeah, express those feelings. Yeah. Yeah, just like yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, man. What all right, so you write this twenty twenty one and now this is where it's at. Yeah. Next yeah, we week, shoot or Yeah. So uh March first. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Is when we shot last year. Okay. Um we did three shoot days. Um and then we kinda gave up on it. Um, oh wow. Okay. Yeah, like we just started getting busy with like commercial work and you know shooting other people's stuff. Yeah, flying out to um, New York. And, yeah, lashes, you know, right? yeah, <laughs> stuff like that. Yeah, um, and you know, like life happens and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, like me and my brother kind of just gave up on it. And we were like, you know, whatever. We would just throw it to you know the back burner. Um, and one day I was like, you know what? Let's let's see what you know. Let's see what that's looking like again. Um, drove out to Michigan City, and next thing you know, we started piecing everything together, and we were like, wow, like. It's actually it's it's not that bad, and it's it's not bad at all. Let me let me actually rephrase that. It's not bad at all. It's it's yeah. a very good body of work, very good project, um, and for a lot of our crew to not know what they were doing at the time, like it's amazing to see what a group of six or seven people, you know, who haven't been doing this for a long time yeah. can do. Just passion. Exactly, just right. pure passion. You know, nobody got paid for this. Like I funded this project myself. Um, just the production, I think I spent thirty five hundred dollars, wow. and that was a lot because you know, like I wasn't making a lot of money, you know. Right. Um, yeah, you weren't. That was yeah, you know, yeah, yeah you know what I'm saying. Like I wasn't getting paid every two weeks or every other week or once a month, like everybody else is. It's, right. I'm literally like every dollar that I was getting was going into this. Wow. Um, but um, March 18th, you know. Um, I, I know you were about to go into it. Yeah, so, yeah. Uh, no, 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 you're good. So March 18th, you know, we'll be having the premiere. Um, Howard Park, right? Howard Park Event Center. That's cool. Um, red carpet event. I'm so excited, man, because, like, even though, like, I'm tired, like, I'm stressed out right now, you know, yeah. from all of this, and my social media is, like, compre- like completely just shot. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just excited, you know, because I know that if we didn't, you know, revisit this, um, what's next will not be what's next, right. you know? Um, I know this a lot is of the step. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Like, uh, there was a video that, uh, I shared on my Instagram story and like, uh, Drake was just basically saying like, like, this is it. Like, this is your time. Like, this is, this is where it starts. And I feel like, you know, for me and my team, like, this is it, you know, this is that moment where it's like, okay, this is going to start the, our, our careers. Right. You know? Um, this is where we'll look back, and this is where the exactly. light switch turned on, exactly. the fire started, all that fun exactly. stuff. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and I feel like, you know, with this premiere, it's all about experience for my crew and also for the people who are attending, um, which is why, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a go-harder, go-home person, like I said earlier. So, yeah. uh, you know, I mean, <laughs> there's, there's a lot of stuff that's, you know, it's just going to be a good experience for people, and, you know, people will see, like, how close me and my team are. Like, you know, we're brothers, you know, we're family first. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I won't, I won't say too much. You right. Know. Come you to know. the event to actually yeah. check it out. I got, I got tickets for you too, man. Oh, no way. Yeah, yeah for yeah. sure. Yeah. Oh. I got two of them for you. No way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Come to the ticket. To yeah. come to, yeah, the, we were planning on going anyway. So. Oh yeah. 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 We were, you know, I got you. So got when you. Colin had talked about it, I'm like, that's so sick. Yeah, and man. What, like, um, like I said, Dre Taylor, who's been on the podcast. Shout out Dre Taylor. Yeah. Dude, he's, uh, I listen to his two for two all the time. Yeah. He's uh, such a and three for three is gonna be sick. I yeah. don't know if he's released that yet. I don't think he has yet. And then four for yeah. four, he said yeah. he was writing. I'm like, dude, dude, yeah, stop, bro. Yeah. It's too, it's too much heat right yeah. now. But anyways, I, I love his stuff. So yeah, man. Um, yeah, when I saw that he's in there, 
who he's been on the podcast before. So if anyone's heard those podcasts, he's in the film. Yeah, so you gotta come check that out. Yeah, he's uh, the main character actually. He's the main character. Okay, yeah. yeah. So yeah, you definitely want to see his. And that's probably his first like acting debut. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Yeah, we've been we've been actually talking about it. I met Dre in 2011, which would be okay. my junior year of high school. Okay. Uh, met him playing basketball, and uh, just come to find out that we're related. <laughs> um, it was awesome. crazy, actually. Um, but I remember, like, <clears throat> I used to, we would always just make music together, no matter if we released it or not. Yeah. And even back then, he was saying, like, man, you know, I want to get into film. I want to act. I want, you know, we all have these big goals when we're younger and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and then to look back at that now, like, I always had it in my in the back of my mind, like, when I was going to start. Like, I already had, like, a group of people in my head that I wanted to work with and pull from. Yeah. Um. So even writing Coffee and Cream, I knew that Dre was going to be my main character. So it made it easier to even like, create this key, like the, create this character because I know how Dre is. Yeah, you knew the mannerisms, the motion, exactly. all that stuff. Exactly. So. Oh, uh, that's awesome. Yeah. 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 What's the? Uh, I mean, I've never written a screenplay or a script or a series. Yeah. Um, I don't like to write. Period. <laughs> I, that's why I'm in podcasting. <laughs> I like, yeah, I like talking. I don't right. like writing, uh, which is tough. It's very tough sometimes. But um, what is what's that whole process like? To like sit down and is it multiple pieces or do you do it in one rough draft? Get the whole idea out there. Like, what was that like writing this coffee and cream, or any screenplay? So each each script is different, right? Yeah. Um, coffee and cream. I just started writing. Um, it was just one random night. Um, just couldn't sleep. Yeah. And I was just like, you know what? I'm going to open up this software and I'm just going to just go at it. Yeah. Um, and there were a bunch of scripts before that prior that I was just, I couldn't, I couldn't really find the inspiration anymore or yeah. it just wasn't it, you know? Um, and coffee and cream, it just came spilling out like a, you know, like somebody yeah, hit an artery releasing. or something. Yeah. You're yeah. releasing it. Yeah, for sure. Um, but this one, I just kind of just, I let it all out, you know, um, but other projects now I, I had to learn how to like outline and, yeah. you know, like have a, like this feature film that I'm working on. It's like a seven page outline and that's not even the script, you know? Wow. Yeah. Like, um, even like my that's character the thoughts. Yeah, exactly. Totally exactly. Yeah. Like how the story is going to come together. Um, and it's not like full in detail, yeah. but um, all of my thoughts are there, like how I see this happening in my head. Um, and then even then, like we have our character breakdowns, you know, yeah. like down to what they're going to wear, down to siblings, down to parents, wow. um, where they're from, um, hobbies, so that when I send this this character profile sheet to, you know, the actor or actress, mm -hmm. they can fully take on this character right. because they know like, okay, this character might like Michael Jackson and Prince and, you know, so they know what error, you know, like, yeah. Um, what Out era, you know, from even like the fashion, you know, everything, you know, mm -hmm. so yeah, yeah, that just get into the character exactly. A lot easier. Yeah, it's it's a lot easier. Yeah, yeah, that's that's so cool. Um, so yeah, so sometimes it just comes out, and then yeah. sometimes you have to really, yeah, you really have to sit down and like, like and plan it out. Yeah, yeah. Do you find that uh, it's easy to do that in your like day to day or week to week, or do you have to like carve out time to do that? Or it's very random, mm -hmm. um, like with the feature film that I'm writing right now, um, I haven't I haven't added to the script in in about two months, right? I've been busy, you know. Yeah. I mean um, <laughs> been happening next week. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So I've been I've been extremely busy, but um it, there's never a day that goes by where I'm like, okay, like I know my script. So it's like I I wanna add this or I wanna tweak this or, you know, anything like that. So I'm always working on it even though I, even though I'm not at my laptop. Yeah. So I know that when it's when it's yeah, time it's to, to sit down, yeah. it's just gonna all come out again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, it's just sitting there resonating pretty Exactly, good. exactly. It's 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 kinda like marinating. Yeah. 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 Well, so, okay, so um what's that like then from I know and you Oh man, I got so many questions. You've opened, Ask like, them all. I love yeah. it. Yeah. So, what's that like from writing it, Coffee and Cream, and then producing it? You know, what you're writing at that time probably looks a little different than oh, yeah. what turns out to be. Yeah. Right. And so, what was that process of, of taking that and turning it into something that people see? Yeah. Like, what was that like? Whew, all right. Was, yeah, that's a big one. Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's a loaded question, but I got an answer for you. <laughs> uh, so. You know, we start off, you know, with the script. 
Um, I sent it over to my brother and immediately we started to um, think about location. Um, okay. And here in Indiana, like film is not really a big thing. So it's hard to get locations. It's hard to get permits because they're just not used to people producing film. Right. Um, so there was a lady that I found on Airbnb <laughs> And I was like, hey, you know, before I book, I just want to let you know, we're going to be shooting a film here. And she was like, oh, that's fine. CNN has been here before shooting documentaries. And no way. Yeah. So okay. I was like, OK, this has to be nothing with God, because like we've been to like different Airbnbs where they're like very like, oh, you guys didn't tell us you were doing this, you right. know, stuff like that. Right. Um, that's a little sketchy, too. Oh, How yeah. do they know? Yeah, they're uh, watching you. The, the, what is it, the ring doorbell service yeah. or whatever? Yeah, yeah, we most definitely Snitching. got caught that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. Um, but, you know, we, we go from, like, location scouting to tech scouting to um, even, like, shots. You know what I'm saying? Like, we'll have, like, stand-ins and, like, let's say, like, there's a scene where Dre's sitting at this table alone. Um, and, like, we have, like, this app that basically, like, it tell like, we can, it, I don't know. Get it together, Trey. <laughs> yeah, um, and basically, like, you, if we want to shoot at a 40 millimeter, you know, focal length, like, we can, like, it'll basically be that shot so that we can yeah. take that, put it in our pre-production so that when it's when it's a first production day, second production day, we open this up and it's like, okay, we already know the shots that we need. We already know how it looks. We just have to light everything and get our character in there. That's nice. Yeah. Yeah. So. It's the, the blueprint, yeah. right? For the basically. shot there. Yep. Basically, that makes sense. Yeah. Wow. But then how do you, I mean... Some of that, I mean, you're just kind of putting together, but it probably changed on the way too. You're like, oh yeah. Okay. As you're, you write it, and then you get to the point where like, okay, this is physically turning into something. Yeah. Um, maybe he doesn't wear red this time. Maybe it's a little bit different here or whatever. Yeah. You know. I, so with that, I mean, nothing ever goes as planned on right. any set. Um, weather weather is a big is a big factor. Oh um, yeah. If it's sunny. If oh, it's yeah. Sunny, like, and Indiana has six different types of weather. Every literally, day. <laughs> literally every day. Yeah. Um, so, like, just being able to predict the sun and control the sun. Yeah. Um, that's that's very hard because I think in a matter of two hours, we went from like the sun was out to now it's overcast. Yeah. So now we got to go throw a light strong enough outside to mimic the sun. And like, yeah. there's a lot that goes into that. Oh, um, man. Yeah, it's it's a lot. Um, I suggest a lot of people come. You know, if you're interested, come be on set to see like how much work you know it takes to 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 get to even what we have now mm -hmm. versus you know what they have in Hollywood. Right. Um. But yeah, so a lot of things change. Um. Even down to like wardrobe. You know, if it just doesn't work, it just doesn't work. You got to get rid of it. Yeah. Um. But I think. A lot of like, I think there were like three scenes that just didn't make the cut because we didn't have enough time. Yeah. And when you're working with an extremely low budget, like thirty five hundred dollars, um, you just can't get it. Um, and I think we actually cut a scene in the editing room as well. Okay. So you know the just editing didn't fit. Yeah, it just didn't fit. You know, it didn't it didn't make sense or it was too typical. You know, yeah. to have this particular scene and these shots in there. So we're like, nah, like we're not gonna be like all the other million, you know, indie filmmakers, you know, right, who do the shot. Every time. Exactly. It's, it's like almost expected that when this guy wake or like when we start this film, somebody is hitting a freaking alarm clock, uh, Yeah, the, you know, and they're starting their day, they put their slippers on and then they go, you know, whatever. Right. Yeah. So yeah, I'm, I'm picturing that right now. As <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, like, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so yeah. So like that scene didn't make it cause we're just like, you know, everyone's doing that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think the the most fun in the editing room for me, um, my brother actually edited the film. I edited the um, the teaser. Okay. And within the teaser, I had to take, I had to take the short film that we have and kind of tell a story within the teaser. Yeah. Um, and yeah. that was hard because I'm like, I can't give away too much. It's a yeah. short. <laughs> Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I think I did a very good job in the teaser of actually telling another story within that. Um, and it's extremely dramatized. <laughs> but, I mean, that's what people want. Right. You know, for being honest, that's, you know, that's what people want. But, yeah, to, to, to finish your question, uh, a lot of things change. Everything yeah. changed. Yeah. Like, literally everything. And it's probably, you have to release a little bit, too, while that happens. Yeah. Just, uh, yeah. Yeah, and you can't, the one thing I had to, to understand is that, like, I can't marry everything. Right. I know a lot of artists, you know, like myself, like we want to marry everything because like this is our baby and we right. put, we spent so much time. Plus what tears. Exactly. So yeah. it's like being able to be like, okay, this just isn't going to work. You know, you got to be able to just release and let it go. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, speaking about releasing, so you're going to have the red carpet premiere. Yes, What's going to happen with the film after that? Are you going to put it on a platform, behind a paywall, on a video streaming service? Like, what's the thoughts there? So this we actually like, just answered that question ourselves. Okay. Because um, at first, you know, we were just like, yeah, let's just throw it on YouTube and Vimeo. And Vimeo right. Um, just so we have something out. But I think what we're going to do is the next eight months, I think we're just going to let it circulate through a bunch of different film festivals and yeah. um, get our name out there. And, you know, I think it's just better that way. Um, because it's actually a film community instead of it just being on YouTube where anybody has access to it. Not right. that I don't want everybody to watch this, no, I, um, but I need it to be in the right eyes, in the right hands, you know, in right. front of investors and producers and executive producers and, you know, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. What you're saying is if you want to see this film, you, gotta you have to come to Howard Park yeah. March 18th <laughs> at 630 at 630. Yeah. To see this film. Yeah. Or you won't see it for maybe another year. Literally. Yeah. Literally. Unless you or, go to the film festivals or something. Yeah. Or you may never see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> but I know there there have been a lot of people who, because we sold out, um, there were a lot of people who were like, hey, you know, are, is there going to be a second screening? Yeah. So I've been thinking about that, which is also stressful again, because, you know, right. now I've got to book another venue and, you know, it won't be as big. Uh, it'll be a lot more, you know, like watered not watered down but you know like you can come in like sweatpants and just come right. you know watch it have a good time network fellowship and then leave you know yeah yeah kind of high yeah <laughs> yeah you know you don't have to come in a blazer you right. know there won't be a red carpet yeah you know stuff like that that's so cool yeah man uh yeah well that would be cool to see if you could could and maybe like local theaters or just have to yeah. play it for a little bit yeah because um yeah there's a tension about it. people hey. want to talk about it. people want to see it exactly yeah that's so cool. Yeah, man. Uh, yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah. It, that is the struggle of do you release it for free? Do you keep it behind a paywall? What do you do with it? How do you do with it? You know, yeah. It's, just, it's a know, struggle. It's tough. It's a struggle sometimes because, like, I I was very indecisive until maybe two weeks ago. Yeah. Um, and I'm just like, what are, you know, what's, what's the best option for me, my crew, my production company, and our futures? Right. Um. You know, I, I just I just don't want it to live on a YouTube space. You know, yeah. I feel like it'll get caught up in all of the other short films. You know, yes. so yeah. yeah, yeah, dark hole of YouTube. Literally, it's unfortunate. Yeah. yeah, I love YouTube, but you know, some some things just like how many times have you came across a very good video, no matter what it was, and it had seven hundred and sixty three likes or and, yeah. and like you know a thousand views or something like that. Not often. Yeah. Not often yeah, at all. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. The, uh, YouTube likes to put content that everyone's watching right now yep. and then never again yep it's there and then gone yep it's a flash in the fast turn around yeah yeah it's like yeah whatever gets you to click right now yeah, and it's like, yeah. all that clickbait stuff yeah i'm not i'm not here for that i, I, yeah. I always feel um empty when i click on it yep. I'm like oh this is oh uh, this is not what i want <laughs> right yeah because like i mean when you go to when you look at that thumbnail and then like you read yeah. the title like and it'll be something totally different it's 100 yeah, yeah it is so that's the world we're living in right now it's crazy i was um yeah i was looking at youtube today and i was watching and they have the shorts i get to the point where i turn it off and i'm like what was the first video i even looked at exactly to get me to here yep and i couldn't remember yeah i didn't even know what yeah got me to where I was at and I'm like oh this is not good <laughs> yeah it's crazy because they just the algorithm just sets that up yeah know? I guess I won't go too deep into that oh you can nah you have more than I won't nah, yeah. nah I won't do that the algorithm that. gets creepy <laughs> yeah it's, yeah it's not good it's yeah like, once yeah they're watching us they are yeah, they're 100% watching well, yeah. they've been watching oh yeah no, since no. like 2000 and yeah, four basically. 2012 when the world ended <laughs> literally yeah <laughs> yeah that's when literally. they started watching yeah. us yeah <laughs> exactly yeah no uh that's that's crazy so um you know all right so i'll jump back i had another question so, okay uh going back to you um in your business you do the filming you do the editing you do the writing uh do you do a lot of like script writing oh yeah all the time yeah, all the time, even for like our commercial clients, you know, yeah. I'm writing the scripts, yeah. even though sometimes it's just like three lines or four lines, you yeah. know, um, with like a voiceover, like I'm still writing. So it's like I have to be as commercial as possible, you know, right. without it feeling like a film. Um, but, you know, I'm I'm still writing every day, you know, even even if it's not what I want to write. But, you know, yeah. I think I'm blessed to even do that, you know, so yeah. like every day, like I'm just like. I can't complain. I'm doing what I wanted to do, you know? Yeah. So, no, that's, yeah. that's very cool. What, uh, if someone has, 
uh, a need for a film. And they're like, I don't know what to do. What's the process typically? Let's say I'm just, just a random person that knows I need to make content, comes to you and says, hey, I need to make content. What does that typically entail? Like, what's, how does that whole process work? Yeah, so we would, is this for like a business or do they have let's a say, script? Let's or say a business. A business? Yeah, so with the business, you know, I'll set up, you know, a meeting. Um, get to know, you know, this person, this owner, you know, whoever the I'm product. speaking to. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, get to know like the product, um, the origin story of the business, the messaging that they're trying to push for. If this is a new product, is this an old product that they're trying to revive? Um, there's a lot that goes into that, you know. Um, yeah. wow understanding you know like brand awareness and you know like we just shot a commercial that should have been shot for halloween but it's march Mm. so it's like me i'm like i'm gonna do whatever my client tells me to do right um but you know so i have i have i would say about 60 percent key creative control yeah um but when a client wants what they want like i'm I'm not going to push back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Do you throw it like a review process that happens? Like you'll write the script and the, do they get final control? I mean, I guess. I, yeah. That you know, could, yeah. Like you get caught in some creative loops all the time that could really just drag a project down a bit. Yeah. that It, it happens almost every project, honestly. Yeah. Um, every commercial that we've done, every, I would say like the last four or five commercials that we've done and they all, they are all turn out really good. Yeah. Um, but it's to the point where like, it starts off as art for us, mm-hmm. but then they just rip it to shreds and it's just like, why did you hire me? Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, it's like, I mean, I, I get, tough. I get, I get why they hired me, right. you know, in my company, but it's like, Oh, that's tough. It, it is. And you know, it is. All the heartstrings. Do you, um, mainly do commercials or what, what's the main, like if your business, you'd say, you know, the majority of what I do is this. Yeah. Is it commercials or? It's 50-50 right now. Right now, it's commercials and one of my biggest clients, which is the South Bend School Corporation. So, oh, very cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I bet that was a big... Uh, that was a big change. Like, going from doing, like, hood music videos with, yeah. like, guns in your face and... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> to like doing baby showers and weddings and stuff like that, too. Yeah. Now I'm doing, like, corporate gigs and... Yeah. Um, actually being able to charge, you know, what needs to be charged and yeah. not just looking for, like, a quick little... Two hundred dollars here or fifty dollars here, right? Um, yeah, things change, you know. Um, I had to, unfortunately, I had to not unfortunately, but like I had to really learn business, mm-hmm. and I, I, I didn't want to, you know. First start off, I'm like, I'm a creative. I don't care anything about the business. Just pay me what my price is. But like, that's not how it works sometimes. Yeah. Um. So I mean, I, I, I think last year really taught me a lot, you know, on the business side and how to go about things and contracts and everything. Yeah. All the legal stuff, oh, and, bruh, yeah. <laughs> bruh, taxes, like, yeah, I'm over it. Yeah, I am over it. Yeah, this, this is the season right now. For <laughs> yeah, literally, I can't. Literally, like, yeah. but yeah. So to answer that second part of your question, um, the main goal is just films, man. Like, I want to be the more creative. <sighs> yeah, you know, like, yeah, I would like, I would love for someone to be like, here's this script, take this and produce it. Um, but honestly. I want to get paid off creating my own content, like uh, kind of like Tyler Perry. Yeah. Um, yeah. But better than Tyler Perry. Yeah. I know people are probably going to be listening. To uh, this, like, dude. ooh, shade or, <laughs> you know, no shade or anything, you know, but like we got to we got to aim to be better than like our mentors, you know, yeah. essentially, you know. Yeah. He created the platform. Exactly. Now you've got to build the next exactly. layer. Exactly. Yeah. Um, And honestly, that's one of my goals this summer. Are you saying you're going to star in your films? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll most look. definitely. Not not this year. Maybe next year. Okay. Um sorry, I cut you totally off. No, 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 no just, you're good. I saw the yeah. Yeah. Good. Um, I mean, so even to go into like the whole Tyler Perry thing, like I drive around South Bend all the time, you know, when I'm bored or if I'm feeling down. Um, and there's like this break in between like South Bend and Niles where it's just a bunch of land. Yeah. And like I drive past there the same exact space every time. Oh my God, like this is my production studio right here. Uh, I need I need ten sound stages. You know, I need, you know, know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. On uh is it thirty or no, twenty going up, yep, right? Yep. Yeah, I know exactly what yep. you're talking about. Yeah, man. So it's it's a bunch of space out there and I'm just like, man, like, why not? Yeah. No one else is using it, you know. Yeah. And I'm not I'm not the I'm not the type of guy where like I get what I need from my city and then I leave. Right. Um, I've left before. And I didn't do anything. 
You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I told myself when I moved back in 2019, like, I have to go hard. Like, I have to be able to do this here and show people that you don't have to leave your hometown. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, As long as you understand, you know, how connections work and how to use social media. Yeah. And you'll be good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So there's a lot of cool stuff in this area. Yeah. Like a lot of things. People sleep on Indiana so much. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. It, um, yeah. I, I just realize more and more every time I'm like, Oh dude, we have access to this and this and this and this. There's so many creators here. Like that's yeah. like Indiana's known for, you know, like corn, corn. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like Indiana Hoosiers, Notre Dame. Right. But I think, I think COVID kind of sparked something different. Yeah. Um, it was less about RVs and like, Hey, like we actually have to, um, support our creatives here because there is a lot of painters, musicians, um, vocalists, rappers, filmmakers, photographers, whatever that you do. Like there's a lot of good, valuable pieces here. Yeah. Um, and I see, uh, like Fort Wayne, I love Fort Wayne. They have like an actual art district and like, they have like, um, apartments and stuff like that where like artists actually get a discount <laughs> you know like if you want to live here yeah um and i wish that that's something that south bend and mishawaka would adopt because i would move downtown in a heartbeat right you know? um bring life to the city literally yeah literally um i mean they're bringing all these bike lanes and all yeah. this other stuff that we honestly don't need <laughs> you know like we got an empty building that's you know used to be apartments why are we not giving this to creatives and actually you know what i'm saying like give yeah. it to people who are going to need it and yeah. use it you know probably yeah uh, so that's, we do that here in Goshen. We yeah. place. That's, that's, that's dope. That's, yeah, no, yeah, cool. that's dope. And um, yeah, I think that is a really important thing. There's There needs to be an emphasis on art. Yeah. And yeah, who's going to make your corporate videos? You know what I mean? You right? Know? If you don't have a creative. Yeah. I mean, yeah, you have the left right brain and the right brain. Exactly. They need to work together. Exactly. You know, to be a whole human. I think that um, with me... No, nah, I won't say that. But with me, I'll say I think that because of like where I am now as an artist, um, my voice is a little different. Hmm. Um, because I am starting to understand that I am building a platform. I am like I'm becoming like Trey Marquise. Yeah. Um. So it's like my my voice kind of matters a little bit, you know, now. And I'm not saying that, like, being cocky or anything or yeah. having, like, an ego. It has a little more weight to it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So um, I have a journal where I have, like, 24 declarations. And at the end of my declarations, and I say these out loud every morning, um, at the end it says, I am Trey Marquise Maley, which Maley is my last name for people that think that Marquise is my last name. <laughs> it's, it's my middle name. Um, but at the, at, the, at the end of it, it's just I am Trey Marquise Maley because – I think a lot of people are starting to respect me more as a filmmaker than what they ever did as an artist. Mm. Um, and and that's okay. Like, at first, I was kind of bummed out about it because I'm like, why well, didn't... Oh, but I'm... But I'm like, I'm, I, I, I'm getting it now. You know what I'm saying? Um, Interesting. And that comes with, you know, I had to build my own table because there were tables that I wanted to sit at with other, other artists, musicians, filmmakers, photographers, but either they would let me in because they needed something from me or... Right. You know, they just you. didn't want me apart. Yeah. You know, so now it's like I had to build my own table. And, like, you see the guys that I'm around. And, yeah. you know, we're still extending that table, adding chairs. And it's it's a lot that's going on. So, yeah. but. The table you're building looks more like a community table. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Friends yeah. And, yep. Yeah. Um, and that's the one thing, like, a lot of filmmakers that I talk to, like, even, you know, no matter if it's online or whatever, like, they say, like, um, the film community is growing in, you know, South Bend, Mishawaka, Niles, you know, like Goshen, Elkhart, stuff like that. Um, because of the things that people are seeing, like me and my team do. And because they see it's possible. Exactly. And, yeah. and as good as that feels to hear and stuff like that. Yeah. It actually adds some pressure as well. Yeah. Um, because yeah, like you're building a platform, you're like, oh crap, I'm building a platform. Yeah, literally. Like without <laughs> where's even the knowing it. Yeah, where's the platform? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Um I gotta build this thing. Yeah. So and I and I know we're not the first like production company yeah. to to be doing this. I understand that um wholeheartedly. But I think to be doing it with little to no experience. Yeah. Um, a bunch of guys coming together that didn't have passion as a team but have passion now as a team and everybody just understanding the goal and every because like we would all just show up you know and just 
just want to just collaborate. And now it's like, okay, cool. Like, let's get this done. Here's like the direction. Exactly. Like, people are investing into, like, uh, Colin, you know, like, yeah. you know, he, he does, like, more, you know, um, car rigging and stuff like that. And yeah. now he's, like, our grip. And Gaff, which is like he's hanging up lights from ceilings and all this stuff that I would never do because it's just too dangerous. Um, <laughs> he's a wild fella. Yeah, no, nah, yeah, sure. yeah. I love him. I don't, I don't know where we would be, you know, a hundred percent without him. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you know, like everybody's investing into their role, you yeah. know. Um, and I think Diving like that's deeper, what, understanding exactly, it more exactly, and that's what last year's experience taught us. Like we did two short films, we did like three commercials. Um, and everybody just kind of understood their role, you know? Um, yeah, one of the things Colin said on the last podcast is now it's getting to the point where all of his friends who are doing film, you guys all collaborated yep. on that commercial recently yep. and all got paid. Yeah. And that was like... It's a good thing. It was like the... That was a, you know, you hit that level. Yeah. Now what's next? Yep. What's the next level? Yeah. yeah. And it feels good um, just to know that, you know, the, the first commercial that's actually going to be seen on Hulu, which I thought it would have been spinning on Hulu by now. No way. Um, yes, yeah, for TMT Automotive. Okay. Um, we, like, I know everybody's like, oh, yeah, you know, that's so dope. We got a Hulu placement. We Nobody got paid. Mm. Nobody. We showed up. Uh, the first location, we got there at 9 o'clock. We didn't wrap till about 10. Oh, wow. You know, nobody Full got paid. Full day. Full day. You know, the actors didn't get paid. Like, everything went to location, rental gear, you know, stuff like that. And we had a micro budget. Like, oh, wow. If I if I would have said no to this, there wouldn't be any of this going on. Right. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, you know, I just, sometimes, you know, we take gigs and we're like, hey, you know, like, this is a good resume builder. Yeah. Or, you know, like, I see something deeper here with this person, you know, that I'm, that we're shooting for. Yeah. Investing in that person. Exactly. Not the money. Exactly. Which goes not back the to money. that point. Yep. Exactly. Like, I, you know, like I stated earlier. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I was getting somewhere. I forgot where I was going. I'm sorry. Yeah. No, 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 no. You're good. You're good. You're good. We talked about uh, you all getting paid on that yeah. commercial at once. Not not that commercial, but yeah. this recent one yeah. you guys did. So, um, the most recent one, it was for a child, uh, child care um, provider. Um and then the one at, or before that was for I Care Express um, on County Road 6. And I think they actually have a location in South Bend. They have like five locations here in India. Yeah. Um, but I remember I was driving to the bank and I had my production manager with me, uh, Brittany, and we were, we were driving to the bank. And I went to go like pull the money out. And I'm like, dang, like, you know, I'm, I'm really paying, you know, my crew. You know, it went from like, like, you know how much like faith they got to have in me? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, but that feels good. Like, I actually, like, I get a thrill out of paying my crew because imagine if I would have took this gig and I wanted to be, you know, greedy and, right. and keep all of the money, I got to do a bunch of, uh, you know, a bunch more work, you know, and being able to trust yourself is a lot harder than being able to trust other people. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Way harder. Um, so, yeah, it's, it's most definitely a good feeling. Um, and I think that they understand that. And, you know, it's a lot of love that comes into, you know, just being able to pay people. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Man. No, your guys are all part of it now. Exactly. It's that community table. You're all exactly. eating. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, it's not like, all right, man, well, I'm going to eat, and then I'm going to come hang out with you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nah, come to the table, dude. Just yeah, right. Out. I love that. Yeah. Man. Yeah, man. That's so cool. What's So, I mean, Coffee and Cream comes out. What's the next steps that you see? Like, what are, like, the boom, boom, boom? Because you, you have a vision, dude. Yeah. I see it right now. I, yeah. I can feel it. I don't know 100% what it is, yeah. but I know you have it. Yeah. And so I'd love to hear kind of – you don't have to give it all away. Um, uh, so I will say my next step after the premiere is sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Rest, um, yeah. Because I, I don't. Like, I go to sleep at 2 in the morning, wake up at 4, and I'm back wow. at it. Oh, my um, gosh. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Like, driving here, I was, like, almost going to sleep. <laughs> um, but, you know, like, you know, that just that just comes with it. You know, it comes with the yeah. passion. It comes with the grind. Yeah. I'll sleep when it's time to sleep at this point. You know, that's how I think of it. Um, but the the next big thing is shooting a feature um, called Deadbeat. Um, and it's about, you know, my experience uh, growing up as a, as a young father, young black father. Uh, some of the stuff that I went through mentally – um, how it changed me emotionally. Um, I don't think that we get to see a lot of a lot of films where like we get to see like the dad's perspective of being a uh, being a father or, or being a parent. Very you know what I'm saying? And and if it is, we we look like we're not shit. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, 
And you know, it's all perspective. You know, at the end of the day, that's so countercultural, but, dude. Yes, yeah. that's, that's so countercultural. Yeah, yeah I, I, there, there's a lot of scripts that I have where it's like it's going against the grain, or it's going against yeah. like what everybody else is talking about. But, and that's kind of always been me. Like, I'm not scared to say like anything. Like, put me in a room with the president. Yeah. Like, with, <laughs> I, like, I don't care if like if that's what if that's what's on my heart to say, I'm gonna say it. Like, yeah. It might ruffle some feathers, but, yeah. but get your panties out of the bunch. Like, yeah. yeah, you're authentic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for yeah, sure. sure. That's a good thing. Yeah. 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 And no one wants a yes, man. No exactly. One wants a, yeah. yeah. You, you're just going to control. I mean, I, that's what I love about art. And you see stuff, and it's like, man, this is not what I was expecting, but I really enjoyed this. Yeah. Like, I didn't know where this was going. It's so boring when you see the same templated, this is how it's done. Yep. This is the formula. Boom, 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 boom. Yep. It, it gets boring after a while. Like, you do need to go against the grain a little bit be like, ooh. ooh. Yeah, it's new. It, it, it feels good to watch something that's refreshing. Like, um, when I seen the film, um, why am I blanking? My brother would be so mad I'm blanking on this film. <laughs> um, everything, everywhere, all at once. I've never seen it. Oh, my God. Uh, I have to check it. That's what I was going to ask. I have this. That's the most authentic movie that I've seen since, I would say, like, the movie Tenet and even before then, Gone Girl. Directed by uh, David Fincher. Have you seen it with Ben Affleck? I haven't. <sighs> Listen, I'm, I'm not a movie guy. I'm a, I'm a serious guy. Okay. But Gone Girl is most definitely my favorite movie. David Fincher is most definitely my favorite director. Okay. Um, But yeah, you got to go see that. It's a good movie. I, I, I will have to check it's that out. It's, it's a long movie. I'm going to let you know now. I think it's like okay. two hours, 28 minutes or something like that. It's all right. But it's it's fire. Yeah. I love binge watching yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah, same. It's, it's all good. Yeah. Yeah. I... I uh, I don't watch a ton of films. I don't watch a ton of TV. Every once in a while, I do get caught up in something. And I'll watch it. Yeah. Right? But um, I play video games. Yeah. And that's the hard part, dude. Once I'm like, video games are so stimulating. Yeah. I'm like, I could be watching this or I could be playing video games. Every time that <laughs> my mom used to be so mad when I was a kid because I would always ask for, uh, at the time it was PlayStation. Yeah. Um, I think I had three PlayStation 3s in two years and I always sold them. And I didn't know why. Until I got older, because I bought a PlayStation, um, or was it an Xbox? No, it was a PlayStation, and I sold it because I I, I found out that I was distracting myself from create, you know, from mm -hmm. from me creating. Yeah. Because you know how easy it is. You hop on the game like after work or something. Like oh, I'm gonna play one game. I'm yeah. gonna play two games. And then seven hours later, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you you forget to eat. You forget about life. You know what I'm saying? Especially like if you're the gamer where you got the headphones mm -hmm. and you know you just you cancel you're everything else out. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You're in it. That's, yeah, that's so bad. So it's yeah. so good. It's so bad. Yeah, literally, <laughs> it's you got to have a love hate relationship at that point. Yeah, yeah. All right, so I'll check out Gone Girl. Yeah, yes, yeah, I will. Yeah. I, I definitely will. Um, yeah. So you're going back. You're going to be making that short film or about you about being a single father. Yeah. What that role is. What's the next thing that you see? It is it, or I don't want to throw like no 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 no. You're good. Yeah, you're I don't want to be like this is yeah. But yeah. Um. So it's not about me being a single father because okay. my my son's mother, you know, she's been there the entire time. Yeah. Um, it's just it's just seeing a different view, you know. Yeah. Um, and without me telling too much of the story, um just yeah, perspective. Yeah, it's sure. perspective. You know, yeah. like there's things that different experiences that I went through, um, as far as like not going to college because I wanted to stay home and be a father, but like didn't get a chance to be a father for like four or five years. Yeah. Um, you know, just just a lot of stuff where it's like um, but also still being able to like work on my craft, you know, like it, it was a lot that I was experiencing. I had a, I had a child my senior year of high school. I was going to say, yeah, yeah. you graduating 13, 20, yeah. Yeah. So I yeah. graduated in 13. So it's 10. Wow. Yeah. My kid is 10. So yeah. it's like, yeah, I was a young father, you know, and I, I sacrificed a lot just like, you know, his mother or any other parent, young parent. Yeah. Um, cause you got to grow up quick. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, oh wow. That's a I'm 30. Yeah. And I'm having my first. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and it's like, this is like. It's different. It's different. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. You literally, your entire 18. life changes. Yeah. Your entire life changes. Yeah. Someone's dependent on you. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, we we would have like battles all the time where like, we would try to get each other to see each other's side. Mm. And even though I would see her side, you know, like, just like, because nine times out of 10, like most children live with their mother if they're not together. Right. Um, so, you know, she would say stuff like, um, and this is no shade to her, like there's no bad blood or beef or anything. Yeah. But, you know, back then, like she would say things like, you don't know what it's like to 
to get him ready to go to appointments or this and that or you know I, I got to work and I'm like but I want to so let me experience that yeah and being told no you know like all of that stuff like it's it's heartbreaking you know what I'm saying like I mean yeah. I'm, I'm a very transparent open person like yeah. there were times where like I contemplated suicide because I'm like I want my son yeah you know what I'm saying yeah. um uh, and you know there's there's a lot that goes into that um, I've had a lot of, you know, breakdowns at 18 years old, you know what I'm saying? Cause like, I just really wanted my son and like my parents would see that, you know what I'm saying? So I know they were affected by that too. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's a lot. And I think that film is going to be very emotional for me, uh, producing and even like re re like rewatching, you know, some of these scenarios play off. Yeah. Of course, it's going to be a little dramatized you right. know, to, to fit that, you know, stigma and stuff like that. Right. Um, but oh, you're gonna be reliving those. Yeah, yeah. It's memories. gonna be like I don't want to say reopening wounds because I'm healed from it. Right. But it's like just re like re experiencing that is going to be like oof. Like mm -hmm. I'm gonna I'm gonna be able to see like growth because like I've already like seen growth. Me writing this, you know, um, where I was at 17 versus where I am now at 27. Right. Um. So yeah, wow. there there's a lot that goes into that though. That's so cool. Yeah. Yeah. That's. It sounds like writing for you is a way to like. I mean, just deal with yeah, deal with life. What's coming up in your spirit? What's yeah. coming up in your emotions? Yeah, all the time. That's so cool. Yeah, that's cool that you have that outlet, Man. and then it's cool that it can turn into something that people can see exactly and experience. Yeah, and also have that same kind of yeah. this is what you, this is the feeling he had yeah. at that point. And I know, like going like back to like my music, like there's like a song uh, called Fall that was on an album uh, I created 2020 called Jungle Love. Um, and it's basically about, like, men, like, you know, every time, like, you know, they fall in love, you know, like, bad stuff happens, you know. <laughs> um, and it's like, dang, like, you get that feeling like, man, like, this stuff hurts every single time, you know. Yeah. Um, and I've, I've had a lot of men, like, reach out to me, you know, whatever age. Um, they're like, man, like, I deal with this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, this is a common thread we're all. Exactly. Yeah. You know, like, I feel like we got women all the time that, you know, can. You know what they, the things that they talk about on their f platform, no matter if it's uh, filmmaking, music, or vlogs or podcasts. Like a lot of stuff resonates resonates with like the women. So like me, I'm like I'm a I'm gonna do the same thing for men. Not yeah. not that there's like some type of battle or war going on. Right. But like I don't I don't think that there are stories being told for us. Yeah. You know, no matter what race, been, you know, not, not, I don't, I feel like it's a little bit more dry than it's ever been before. Yeah. I feel that. That's, yeah. I, I feel like a lot of movies when it comes to like, when the man is the main character, um, either he's like, he's uh, dumb, uh, fat, alcoholic, addicted to drugs. You know what I'm saying? Like, especially like black movies, like mm. it's always like, it's, it's trauma at this point. You know, like, why do I want to re rewatch a slavery movie yeah why yeah you know like why does the why do why do black characters have to come from the bottom why can't we start at the top with the with the big house with the white picket fence with the dog and the family you know like yeah why can't we have that already starting off in the film why is that why is that the end goal it's because it's a formula right now and they're making money off exactly. of it to get yep. you in that mm -hmm. bro yeah yeah so uh, yeah man I, so that like with, with my films man it's like of course, or I have to give my my characters a little struggle, yeah. you know. That's uh, a human. Yeah, it's yeah, it's like you know. I, I I some movies like people give their main character what they want, you know. Sometimes they don't, uh, or they get both. Um, but with my characters, like yeah, it's going to be some struggle, but like it's not going to be like. Uh, what movie is that? <laughs> Yeah. I'm blanking, but like it's not it's not like there's going to be like true like very like hardcore struggle like right parents were missing and yeah. you know Grew up in the orphanage it, exactly right. like it's not gonna be like anything yeah. crazy like that you know what yeah. i'm saying um walk outside and dad got shot yeah you know yeah, what i'm right. saying like yeah it's not gonna be like a you know peter parker where uncle ben right. gets shot you know what i'm saying right. like it's not gonna it's not gonna be nothing it's gonna like be that. real yeah exactly yeah, but we're all going we're all struggling yeah that's a, that's the experience that we're all having yeah on on different levels yeah. right different spectrums for sure yeah. but if you can uh, relay that people will connect with that and I, I think going back to Tyler Perry um because I've studied him a lot um on the business side less artsy but like if you really go back and watch Tyler Perry's films even his plays um it's for a very um he has a demographic yeah um it's for married black women 
single, single, single black women. Um, I mean, you just look at his stories, yeah. you know? Um, yeah, I mean, I've, watched, I don't know, I've watched a couple of them. Yeah, like yeah. he has a demographic. And, and, yeah. And I'm not mad at that, you know, because like on a, like a yeah love and like a like a there's yep. that tension yep. that's there. Yep. That, I'm like okay, whatever. But yeah. like, because like there's there's a lot of movies that he has where it's like you have this struggling mother with mm-hmm. you, however many children she's been through so much in other relationships where she's traumatized, she's been hurt, she doesn't want to trust. Here comes this good guy. He has to yeah. fight so hard to get her to see like I'm I'm really not here to hurt you. Right. You know what I'm saying? And then she pushes him back and. When she needs something, now she has to call him. And now he's kind of like, oh, well, where was that energy? Yeah. When you, you know, when he I was wants, trying to get yeah. to know you, you know, months ago, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. A lot of his movies are like that. Yeah. Um, but um, I respect the craft. You know, I, I I love the business side of everything that he does. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's kind of where, like, I pull from him. Yeah. He's he's kind of um, the interesting thing about Tyler Perry. And I don't know a ton. And you know way more. But he's almost like a segment outside of Hollywood. Yep. And I really do appreciate that independence. Yeah. Because, yeah. Um, yeah, I think in Hollywood, and I'm just talking purely from my opinion and perspective, but uh, there's no new stuff happening. It's all remakes. It's all like, let's make money. Let's figure it out. Like, National Treasure, let's remake it. We've already yep. had three. Yep. I don't know how many. <laughs> right. But let's, let's do a new twist on it. I'm like, yeah. okay, well, I mean, I'm not going to, me personally, I'm not going to watch that. Yeah. You know? There's nothing original anymore. It feels like, yeah. Nothing. But, you know, and, and it's because they know this makes money, this works. They're trying to write what sells versus write, writing what you've experienced. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Writing from the heart. Yeah. Being authentic. Yeah. It's like, it's tough. It's tough. And it's like, sometimes you need to take that risk yeah. to produce films that are just fantastic. Yeah. You know? And I think like with that on a business level, um, it's not bad to have a niche audience. Yeah. You know? Because if I know that now creativity wise, it might lack, but like if I know that I have these stories that, you know, I've went through that are going to help men, um, you know, I mean, like I said, I mean, I, I don't think on my end it's going to lack creativity because my brother, who's my DP, is just amazing at what he does. But even from a from a writing experience, like or standpoint, like, I don't think that I'll get dry because like. I've I, even at 27, like bro, I've I've went through some things that like everybody goes through things. I understand that, but I've either a put myself through things myself by being hard headed, like my parents always told me when I was a kid, <laughs> or <laughs> or you know what I'm saying, things that I've just dealt with with women, with friends, you know, church, like everything, you know, like yeah. and people always tell me like, oh man, I I didn't think of it like this, or you know, like people come to me because like you said, like not being a yes man or just seeing things differently, yeah. and I. I think that, you know, with that being said, like my stories are going to be a lot differently and, and, and view differently, you know, than a regular person. Right. Yeah. Or Authentic. regular writer. My bad. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, I think that's awesome, man. I, oh, all right. So I have a question for you. Um, maybe a little slightly different okay. since you're kind of in the film industry, seeing all the stuff, where do you think that industry goes? Like, you know, we're not, People aren't going and watching movies yeah. in movie theaters as much as they do. They still are. I mean, you got the streaming services, right? And you don't know. I, I don't know. Streaming services are, are so many now. Yeah. So many different ones. You name a bunch of them. You got YouTube. It's a free platform. But you're right. It gets caught in that hole. And it's gone. Yep. Right. So what what is the future for like artists like you? Where, where do you see yourself putting your stuff on platform? Or, or how do you see that? What were your thoughts on that? I'm so curious. I'm curious. I honestly don't think that it's going to change. I honestly think that streaming services are going to die out within the next 10 years. Mm. Um, because when there's so many, we have too many options. Yeah. You know? Um, I mean, think about like cell phone companies. How many cell phone companies did we have 20 years ago? Right. You know? Yeah. Think about it now. It's all they're all buying each other out and, you know, combining into one and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and we see it now, you know, um, but I, I think that the streaming platforms are going to die out. And I know a lot of people disagree with me, but that's OK. Yeah. Um, I think that. Depending how these next three to five years go, like we will see people back in in the movie theaters because it's going to be more. It's, I think it's going to go back to art instead of business. Mm. Um and I think that's going to be because of indie filmmakers like me. Like, there's a lot of pressure being being put on Hollywood right now. 
Because 2020, there were so many productions made where there were six people on the crew versus in Hollywood where there's 108 people. Right. You know, so if, if we can get a feature film made and produced for $400,000, we don't need, you know, the I mean, hundred million dollar budget. Yeah, you know, I mean, give it to me. Right. <laughs> I'll take the budget. I'll take the, you know, give me three million. Right. But like, if somebody gave me three hundred thousand dollars to produce my next film, I'm, I'm gonna get the job done yeah. with the crew that I have. Plus, you know, a couple of people. Um, I just think that indie filmmakers are going to be the reason why, like, the industry changes. Yeah. I think Hollywood is going to crash and burn, just like the music industry right now. Yeah, it, that's also crashing. Yeah. Yeah. Because like TikTok. Instagram, you know, everything, you know, like disrupting it. Yeah. It, it's hard to, it's hard to get as a, as a record label, it's hard to like walk up to an artist and like, Hey, we see you blowing up on social media. You already have a million followers. We're going to give you $500,000 with when, in, in all actuality, he can put out a product and make that and make that $500,000 in two days. Yeah. If it's you know if Way if it's more independent exactly mm -hmm. exactly so I think indie I think indie films are going to move like that yeah so I yeah that. yeah that's cool yeah yeah do you think there's um I mean I don't know a ton about crypto and NFTs but I could see something like that where yep. you can get paid for anytime someone wants to stream it yep. it doesn't have to be behind a paywall that's ten dollars to see the film it's yeah. a little bit less but then every time they watch it. You get paid off that. I yeah. can see something like that. So I, I know that like Vimeo has an option to where like you can pay for it or even uh, Twitch, you know, okay. yeah. um, if I, you know, clearly that would have to be a platform that I would have to grow. I don't, I don't know anything about Twitch, yeah. um, but like just, you know, everyone's familiar with discord, you yeah. know? So if I wanted to stream it on discord, I, I don't think I can, you know, charge people for that. Um, I mean, maybe if it's like a private link, I could. They pay yeah. for it and then I send a link, you know, Probably. but whatever, you know, um, I think that is an option. Um, I don't think I would go that route. I think that's, a, that's too much for me. Yeah. That's a lot of handle. <laughs> yeah. 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 Maybe if I got like a couple assistants to, to do it, right. yeah, but no, nah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That totally, that makes sense. Wow, man. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm out of questions now. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> that's so good, dude. Um, <clears throat> Let's let's give the people one more time. Is it sold out? So they probably yeah, yeah it's sold out. Yeah, well, if you guys want to think about it on March eighteenth, <laughs> six thirty, Howard Park. You can watch from outside the window. Yeah, you can think about it. Uh, it's gonna be cold, so wear your jackets. That's cool. I, I I love that you're just producing. I mean, and I love the crew that you have. I've had um, uh, John Trey on. Really? I guess yeah. Okay. We had a good time calling yeah. yourself. So we got to get Tyrus on here. Tyrus, X? Yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. It's it's cool to, and I've seen you guys um, different different pieces of you through social media, yeah. different things, and so it's cool to see just the stuff you guys are doing. You uh, specifically, what yeah. you're doing. Thank you. And, Thank you. Um, yeah, I love the vision, dude. Yeah, man. And I love the story too. Yeah, it's it's a you know it's it's layers for sure to me. You know what I'm saying. Um, and before we go, because I didn't, I, I don't know if you were rapping or not. Yeah, no, go for it. Um, for for all of my creators that are going to listen to this podcast, um, I was asked a, I was asked a question on Loud Law, uh, Loud, Loud Talk TV yesterday, um, their podcast, and I got asked, "What would I tell myself fifteen years ago?" Hmm. Um, you know, a lot of people are like, "Oh, don't do this, and watch out for this, and yada yada yada." And me personally, like I would, I would thank myself at 12 years old. I would thank myself and be like, thank you for not giving up. Thank you for not telling these, you know, listening to these people who are trying to keep you in a box. Yeah. Um, because all of my ideas, everything that I do is just so like, it's so big that people cannot see it. And that's okay. Cause like, that's, that's what this premiere is for is to show people that like, I went from a small idea to, to now we're having a premiere. And even the next one's going to be even bigger, but it's going to be in Chicago and Dream Story Films is going to be in lights and Trey Marquise is going to be in lights. You know what I'm saying? Stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. Um, you just got to you got to turn people into believers. But, you know, I would just tell my 12 year old self, like, thank you. You know what I'm saying? Because like, like I said, like I, I got I got expelled from school on the second to last day. Uh, a teacher told me that I wouldn't be shit. Yeah. And like. I looked at him and I was like, and, and we're cool to this day, yeah. but I was like, who are you to tell me that? And like, we had some other words and I threw a chair at him <laughs> and I'm like, who are you to tell me, you know, I'm not going to be nothing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's such a, 
Yeah, yeah. So it's a lot of fire in me because I've yeah. I've been told no a lot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or you're not you're not gonna make it. Yeah, or I'm not good enough, or I'm not whatever enough. And you know, shout out to my twelve year old self, you know what I'm saying, for keeping it pushing. Yeah. It's cool. I it's interesting too, because I mean like you said with, with Dre when you were young and you're playing basketball, he's like, I wanna act yeah. and stuff. And and it sounds like this is some of the dreams you had then. Like I, I you know, going back to the whole God thing, I feel like you know, I I knew when I was young too that I want to talk to people. Like, yeah, you get these things put into you, and you, the world wants to qu- quench that, crush it. Like, yes, don't sir. even be who you're supposed to be. Yeah, you know, if you have a feeling, man, follow that. And yeah. it sounds like that's what you're doing. Yeah, and man, it's, and it's happening, man. And yeah, so, I remember. I cool. I used to get in trouble in school a lot because, like, I was a class clown. A class clown. Like, I I I think I got moved up twice. Um but I was never challenged in school. I would get all my work done and either I would be like making beats on my desk or like writing girls loving letters and you know, like like yeah. just like little stuff like that. Those are that. scripts. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those, Those are scripts essentially and songs and you know, stuff yeah. like that. Um, but I knew in third grade that I was going to be in entertainment. Mm. Um I didn't know what lane. I think it's all I think it's all lanes, if I'm being honest. Like one day I'm I'm gonna have a comedy special. Yeah, no yeah, way. Don't, yeah, don't worry. Yeah, yeah, don't worry. It's coming. Oh man, it's coming. Yeah, but uh, uh, but yeah. That's so old, dude. I, I I thought about that too. And I'm like, I want to get in front of people. Oh, I love it. You really? Yeah. yeah. I I I've, I've performed in front of like 1,500 people, so I know I can be able to handle 15,000. No way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, you know, from from a young age, you know, I just I just knew I was gonna be entertaining, uh, entertainment. I love entertaining people. Yeah. Um, even if you know. We just having like a little kickback at somebody's house. Like I love entertaining people, and that's what I used to get in trouble in school for was entertaining people. You know what I'm saying? Keeping people laughing. Like I love keep, like keeping people smiling. Yeah. Um, you know. So I just knew from a young age, and I just followed that. Right. So yeah. Yeah. Now I think we we get put these things, gifts or just you know visions. Yeah. You know, the world wants to quench it. Yeah, I've, I totally agree with that. Where can people find you? Where's like the best way that people reach out to you? Let's say I want to. You know, business wise, if I want to get a hold of you, if I want to see other creative stuff you're doing, yeah, where's that at? So, uh, I'm on LinkedIn, uh, you I love can find, that. yeah, LinkedIn, Trey Marquise, T R E M A R Q U I S E. Yeah, same with Facebook, I'm definitely connected. Uh, with yeah, man, yeah, so. I'm on LinkedIn for sure, man. Um, you make a lot of connections on LinkedIn that people would not think about, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. as far as like corporate, you know, yeah. And you can um, message him like right. Yeah, to right. Him. Yeah, yeah, right to like, him. Like I've, I've talked to like producers from LA, and they're yeah. like, you know, I like even when I was like trash when I first started, and like this guy, he like I, I still have his number, and like like he would call me, he would be like, hey, like if you if you want to do this, like you got to be able to do this, do this, do this, and do this. Like it's gonna take time. Yeah. You're gonna suck for a while, but like just keep like you know just keep you know keep the keep the path that you're on, you know stuff like that. Yeah. Um, Instagram. It is underscore Trey Marquise, T R E M A R Q U I S E. Um, Twitter is Trey Marquise underscore. <laughs> um, there's another Trey Marquise out here. Okay. Yeah, we gotta we gotta we gotta, gotta eliminate him. him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta eliminate him. Um, yeah. And then you can follow uh, my production company, which is Dream Story Films underscore on Instagram. Okay. Um, Dream Story Films on Facebook, and uh, also Trey Marquise on YouTube. Okay. So, uh, oh, and dreamstoryfilms.com if you want a book, you know, stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. I'll put all of those in the show notes. Yeah, for sure. For the podcast. So yeah. people can Perfect. find them. But yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, man. Got a lot of avenues to get a hold of you. Yeah. 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 Wow. The accessibility these days is uh, wild. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, if it, only they could all come to one spot where then you can manage them. You know yeah. what I mean? And, so that and that, that's what I'm trying to get it to. It's like, I, as far as like business, I want to push it to where like you can only find me on Instagram. Right. But you can only book through the website. Yeah. Like no more like, hey, bro, I'm going to DM you at three in the morning because I have this crazy idea because I'm high. Yeah. And <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yeah. yeah. Dude, have you ever thought about doing this upside down? Right. Yeah. yeah like right. I literally had somebody call me at like midnight last week and he was like, same typical story and it's like yeah bro like it's gonna be a lot of guns and drugs bro and it's gonna be a lot of, i'm like oh so you're talking about like this movie and they're like nah bro it's like but it's gonna be like this i'm like oh so this movie yeah but i i get it like i i love the cause yeah but it's like stop calling me past nine like yeah. not even that past five like those are business hours right. like stop like yeah I, you don't know if i'm with my son or right. you know what i'm saying stuff like that but i love i love the cause you know what i'm saying i'm glad that people are you know can even 
you know, reach out to me and say like, hey, like I was thinking about you for this idea. No matter if the idea, you know, comes to life or not. Yeah, if it if it sticks or not. Yeah. Oh, I did have a question. Oh, shoot. All right. I'm sorry. Yeah. You had talked about um, filming music videos and the guns point. Yeah. Is there like a protocol you do to make sure like all the guns are? Yes. You know what I mean? Like yeah. make sure there's not one in the chamber. Mm-hmm. Or whatever. Okay. Yeah. So. Because um, those videos go hard. But yeah. Every time I watch them, I'm like, man, I would not want to film that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we were at a music. It wasn't my, excuse me. It wasn't my um, music video shoot. I was just helping on set. This is years before I started shooting. Okay. Um, and like we did a safety check. Um, and there was one guy who like was upset because like he didn't want to put his gun on safety because his ops was, were looking for him. And I'm like why are you here? Like we're in a public space. Like yeah. you shouldn't be here. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so that, that was that, <laughs> that got a almost confrontational. Really? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, that's for your safety. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like if, if, if I got my camera in my hands and you're, you're doing this and it's like, yeah. And finger on the trigger too. On the trigger, you right. know? Um, but I mean, luckily I've never had anything, you know, happen clearly cause I'm here right now. Yeah. Um, but it's 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 dangerous a little bit. Yeah. Not a little bit. Oh, <laughs> yeah. A lot of it is dangerous. Um, but I, I, I quickly took myself out of that. I think I did like two videos like that and it just made me uncomfortable and I'm like, I know where I'm headed in life and I cannot go down that path. Yeah. You know, and it's so easy to go down that path because like those dudes are ready to shoot a music video every every Friday when they get paid. You know, it's like, hey, bro, I got 500. Let's shoot. And if I take four four videos a- every weekend. Yeah, that's money. That's you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it's, it's quick money, but it's like you got to deal with uh, these people on this side of town. They don't want to work with you anymore or they want you to take down their videos because you shot with, with their. Oh, no way. Yeah. Really? It, yeah. Yeah. Like I've had uh, there was a detective that thought I was an affiliate, uh, an affiliate with these these people and they hit me up on facebook and they were like hey you know do you know i'm like nah bro i just got paid to to shoot the video that's it like i'm not yeah. i don't associate myself with these people like yeah. i know them <laughs> you know what i'm saying but like i'm not giving no names no nothing because yeah. like I, I i got this was a hired gig that's it yeah so the yeah it's transaction yeah yeah it's it's dangerous but you know um you kind of got to start somewhere and like honestly and maybe some people would disagree with me but like as black filmmakers like we don't get a chance to just start off doing like going to film school right you know like we pick up a camera and like that's like the most accessible thing to go shoot yeah unless you're like want to go shoot baby showers but like yeah who wants to do that yeah like that's for weddings yeah like i mean weddings pay good but like yeah 12 hours on your feet yeah it, on it the sucks weekend too. yeah on the yeah, weekends and on the weekend and you'll get paid but like 2021 i think i did like nine weddings nine weekends in a row yeah traveling Fort Wayne, Chicago, oh, Indianapolis, gosh. like, oh, I was done. Yeah. I was done. Like, I was like, I'm not doing weddings anymore. Yeah. Um, Every person I talk that does that, they do it for a season. They're like, yeah, this is, it was yeah. pretty well, but it was just so much work. Yeah. You, you literally like you, you kill yourself because like you spend the rest of the week trying to recover. Mm-hmm. Cause you know, you still got, you still have life after that. Yeah. You know what I'm well, saying? You got to edit the film. Exactly. All that stuff. Exactly. Too, right? That's exactly. work as well. I mean, it's, you can make money off of it if you charge enough to where, like me, I would love it to where, like, I create a separate company from Dream Story Films that is, uh, we niche down and do weddings. Mm-hmm. I'm not shooting anything. Right. I'm not adding any, anything. I'm just going to send somebody to go shoot them. Logistics. Exactly. Right. You know what I'm saying? Work work smarter, not harder. You know what I'm saying? I know that there's money in that industry and in that lane. And if you have a name, too, they know, okay, I can call them. I can trust this person. In this aspect, too. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. You know, um, that's kind of what I'm trying to do in my, like, in the corporate world. Yeah. You know? You know, where I get it to, well, I mean, it kind of is to that point now where, like, I can send somebody out to go do this shoot so that I can focus on a film. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like he's making money, I'm making money, the company's making money. Like right. that's that's kind of where well, where I'm a going. Growth mentality too. Oh yeah, oh that's yeah, a huge growth. Mentality. Yeah, and you you can't be greedy. You can't be stingy at all. Yeah. Like you'll burn yourself out. <laughs> yeah, and um, those people that you're working with who are going and shooting those films, right, and working underneath you, eventually they'll grow to the point where they can do it on them, their own. Yeah, or they're gonna be like, man, this guy treats me well. I'm gonna yeah, with him. Yeah, so it is a real give and take. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've I've worked for um, another guy. I was literally there for like thirty days. I was ready to quit on my first day. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and I, I mean, I had a camera in my hands, but like, 
I was like, there's there's a there's a lesson in this. Mm. Um and the lesson was to learn how to not treat my employees. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And not to call like my brothers my employees because they're not in you no know, way, no way, shape, or form. Right. But like when it gets to that point right. where I have to hire people. You want to be it, a good boss. Yeah, you know, I want to be a good boss, you know, because I know I'm a good person. But being a good boss is totally different. You know what I'm saying? Because you gotta, you gotta, you gotta just be able to be the right leader. Um, you gotta be able to say things correctly in order for like for them to receive it properly. Yeah. Um, and I know that's something I've been working on because like I can say something like I said earlier. Like I'll put me in front of anybody. Like I'll say what needs to be said. Right. But like when it comes to business, I I can't I can't talk to to my employees like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. You have to be yeah. a little more tactful. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah, or there's repercussions. Yeah. Yeah, that's fascinating. You know, everything you do, it sounds like it just, I mean, that's what I've seen in my life. Every time I do something, it builds. Like every time, yeah. Every time, I'm like, I learned this lesson for a reason. Whether I don't know it now, I'll yeah. know it later. Yep. You know, yeah. That's so cool. Yeah, man. All right, one more time. Where do, where, where do people find you? Uh, Trey Marquis, everywhere. Everywhere. Social media, underscore sometimes, sometimes <laughs> not. Yep. Uh, Dreamstoryfilms.com. Dreamstoryfilms.com. Dude, thanks so much for coming on. Man, Any thank last you for words? having me. Yeah. Oh, just be on the lookout. You know, it's Trey Marquis, Corlin Gillespie, Colin uh, Gruntman, Tyrus Tucker, John Trayvon, Parker Norris, like Daniel uh, Hillis. Like we're all it's we're household names already. Already. Yeah. So be on the lookout. Yeah. dude. Thank you so much for coming on. dude. Thank this you. was fun. Thank you. Um, yeah. I just see the vision, dude. That thank you. Vision. All right, bro. All right, everyone. Uh, catch you next time on Tim's podcast. Peace.